Hey everyone, Sammy here. Uh, today I'm going to teach you a little bit about uh, some ladder logic and I'll show you guys how to wire up the torque converter lockup mod for your Ford 4R100 transmission. But first, some coffee. Can't start your day without. Uh, that was from last night. No, coffee. Pour a cup of coffee. Joe. Here's ladder logic. This is the diagram. Oh, come on, come into focus for me. There you are. All right. So you've got 12 volts hot. This is called ladder logic or relay logic. It's a 12 volt hot source right here. Got this is your push button. We're, we're not going to worry about this. This says CR1, CR4. We're not going to worry about that just yet. This is your push button. This is an actual real world device, and these are your wires kind of relative to it. CR1. Come on. CR1. We have a red light. We have CR2, CR3, CR4, and a little squiggly line that says 23. K and then Lulu 11. That's ohms. 23k ohms. Okay, so CR1. What is CR1? CR1 is a control relay. This is the coil for your control relay on um, on your standard vehicle relay. Oh, you know what? Hang on. I will go grab one. All right, here we are. This is your standard vehicle relay. Come on, focus. Get into some better light. There you are. So if you look at pins 85 and 86, that is what's called your coil, your coil pins. And if we flip it like this, you look right on in there. Oh, there it is. Pins 85 and 86, that's this pin here and this pin here. This one, you, they're actually, they're a little more silver than the other pins. It's because they're not meant, they're, well they're probably made of, probably just made of aluminum, but these ones look like they're made of copper because these three pins, this one down here, this is pin 30, and what is that, 87 and 88, is that what it is? Let's see, where is it, where is it? 87 and 87A. So this bottom one is pin 30, pin 87 slash 87A. It says it right in, I can't quite. 87 and 87A is this one, the middle one. 87, 87A, 30. 86, 85. So when you apply voltage to your two coils here, which is pin 85 and 86, this little rocker Think of this as your three-way light switch that you have at your top of your stairs and at the bottom of your stairs. That's basically how that switch works with two of those, but that's another topic. So pin 30 is your common. You put your hot to there, so your 12 volt, your 12 volts power source goes to there. And if you look at this stick, it goes to 87A. That means 87A is a normally closed pin contact right there. So when there's power on 30, there's power on 87A. However, when you energize, meaning you put 12 volts on one side, well, in this case, 12 volts on one side and a ground on the other side, and you complete that circuit with a switch or a button or whatever it may be, this little stick will, with this dotted line that represents it's they're mechanically interlocked, means that's gonna, it's a little solenoid that's gonna energize and move and it's going to move this contact from 87A to 87. So 87, when this relay is energized, 87 is now your contact that has power, and 87A no longer has contact. Normally open, normally closed. 
Are you with me so far? I hope so. So, let's put that guy right there for reference right now. So if you get your push button. I'm also going to post a link for... I already took a quality picture of this. I'll post the link of the diagram so you can follow it on your own. So you got your push button in line with a normally closed contact control relay 4. That's down here. Now control relay 4 gets its power from your brake sensor. The red the, the red and light green wire on your brake sensor. Now when you go up, and I'll show you in a minute when, I, when we go to find our more complicated parts here. So, push button, normally closed, control relay one. So when you tap the brakes, this first control relay breaks this whole circuit. Control, the contact for control relay 1 is also attached to control relay 2. Alright? And control relay 3. And control relay 2. Ooh. Sorry, I forgot to edit this. Alright. Starting this off, we have our push button. This is our real world device. Attached in series to normally close contact. Control relay one and a red light. It's basically when control relay one is on, so when you press this button, come on, phone. Alright. So when you press the button, control relay one energizes, contacts change state. That becomes a closed contact. That holds this circuit. This is called a memory circuit. That holds this circuit together. Ground. 12 volts. At the same time, it's holding this circuit together, but it's also energizing this circuit. Control relay 2 and control relay 3. Control relay 2 closes, which brings 12 volts in through a 23k ohm resistor which attaches to the purple and yellow wire that goes to the PCM. I'll show you that under the hood in a minute. Now let's look at control relay 3. Control relay 3 is attached to the purple and yellow wire that goes to the transmission. It intercepts it. We have a normally closed and normally open. So this then opens up and it grounds it out. When we tap the brake, brake sensor, red, red and light green wire, control relay 4, control relay 4 energizes, boop, kills this whole circuit and everything goes back to normal. A lot of little things that happen but it's actually really easy. So, Sip of coffee. So for on all these relays, you're gonna need four control relays. One, two, three, four. These connection points are going to be your 86 and 85. Pin 86, pin 85. Pin 86. Pin 85. 6. 85. Now, it's going to be your normally open contact, which is 30 and 87. So we go pin 30, pin 87. Pin 30, pin 87. Now this one's normally closed, so that's pin 30 and pin 87A. Oh look, I normally open, so this is pin 30 and pin 87. That's all there is to it. 
If you can understand this, that's half the battle. So you get your four relays. Imagine this, this part here is attached to this part here. Basically, you cut that wire and you put this circuit in between. And it's just right there and there. Now let's step outside. This will take a minute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it unlocked right now? I think it is. See now, until I replace the dash and the interior, I just have it inside here. It's actually my system is in there somewhere. I took my four relays and just wrapped them all together. I'm going to wait until I do my hood swap and dash swap and I'm going to get a dedicated dedicated relay box. I don't know. For all my stuff. So let's see. Oh, new fuel pump. I'm gonna install that later, show you guys how to do that. Okay, so. Alright. Now, I soldered them together. It's in here somewhere. So many wires. Oh man, I, do I ever miss my indirect injection 94? Is it? Oh, where the hell is it? Okay. Give me a minute. Alright, so it also helps to have some diagrams printed out and a bit of a book. As you can see, I dog deered a few, had a couple issues already. But, connector is right here. On, at least this is on my 2002. There's one connector that's affixed to... No flash. Okay, it's not that one. Tough to get at. The, the more wire you can get at, the better. So, like, if you can cut it longer and still have access to it, it's a bit of a bitch to solder. But, uh, yeah, and after, after you get your solder like that, come on, to you get your solder to that point, then you'll bend it back so that they're running parallel. Like, oh, it's hard to do with a camera in your hand. Bend them so the wires are running parallel. And then you just throw a little heat shrink on her. Give her a little blast with a lighter or a heat gun. She's pretty much good to go. That, that joint would never come apart. So yeah, it's the purple and yellow wire. Great. Okay, this is my edge tuner, so I'll pull that off. These are like two little, uh, I think they're two little relay boxes. I don't know, I've never really had to screw with them. Oh, I got some sort of creature reeling around. Get out of here, creature. No creatures living in my engine. Yeah, so that little guy down there. Yellow and purple, can't miss him. 
And honestly, if you get the wires, if you get the wires hooked up backwards, it just won't work. And there's, it won't break anything. It just won't engage, and you'll just have your transmission. Ugh. Woo! You'll just have your uh, overdrive light on. Again, this is for the 2002s, I think. I can't remember if it was 2001 or 2002 that they changed the wiring, but they changed the way the wiring harnesses were. It might've been in 2000, I'm not 100% sure. You'd have to double check, but that's where, uh, that's where that comes from. So here's my momentary push button. Remember guys, I'm fucking tearing this out, so I really don't give a crap how my interior looks. It's gonna be a 2008 soon. All this is for fun function, form over, what is the word, what is the word? Uh, function over fashion, that's the one. There you go. Just right there by my thumb. Just boop, boop, boop. So yeah. Fuel pump. Pain in the butt. But. And I'll be waiting for a. For a fast. Getting a fast. That's going to be for my. WVO setup. I'll show you guys more about that later. Give you a little, uh, little sneak peek. Alternative resources. So, what's what's inside? What's that? Okay, something. Something's happening. Stay tuned. One more thing. Brake sensor wire. Un physically right above your brake pedal. You take the connector off so you can get a little better access. Your red and light green wire. You just want to tap into that because that sends, when you press your brake, that's going to send a 12 volt and that's going to energize your CR4 and that's going to kill your circuit.